Well, uh, a lot of energy comes from the sun, and we get a lot of that energy in photons, but a lot of the energy comes in the protons and electrons that uh, flow from the sun in what we call the solar wind. And that solar wind interacts with the Earth differently than the uh, photons do, and sometimes can be very disruptive to our environment. Space weather uh, includes uh, many different aspects of the interaction between the sun and the earth, uh, but a very important one is the way to that energy couples from the solar wind, that's the protons and electrons that are coming from the sun, uh, into the earth's magnetosphere. And generally that energy is shielded from the Earth's magnetosphere, but uh, under certain conditions in which the magnetic play field plays a very important role, uh, then that energy couples very strongly to the Earth, and the Earth can be uh, very much affected by uh, the coupling uh, with the solar wind. Uh, that uh, The magnetic field is a very uh, esoteric term. We don't usually think of uh, fields very much in our day-to-day uh, -day existence, although we walk in the gravitational field all the time and get pulled down to the Earth, a uh, magnetic field can also pull, uh, and it uh, pulls between the solar wind and the Earth's uh, magnetic field and, magnetic, uh, and magnetically confined plasma. So there's a, a tug uh, applied to the Earth's magnetosphere by the solar wind, and it, that tug increases when the magnetic fields reconnect or join up uh, by this process that we've termed magnetic reconnection. Magnetic reconnection happens in a lot of different places, and one of our uh, difficulties is trying to find exactly where that uh, place is or where it happens most strongly. Uh, there's uh, uh, one place right at the, uh, on the line between the Earth and the Sun, uh, which we call the subsolar point, obviously, uh, and that is a, a region where we would think that the coupling or the reconnection is strongest. Uh, there's another reconnection point on the night side of the Earth, uh, and that really uh, affects the uh, Earth's magnetic field and not so much the uh, solar wind uh, or the interplanetary magnetic field. Uh, but it's very important to uh, the energy processes within the magnetosphere. So, one on the day side and one on the night side. Well, uh, in the early days, when I started in this business, we only launched one spacecraft at a time. Uh, and uh, we tried to explore this region, and we could find out uh, what was going on, sort of, but it was moving all over the place. Uh, and so uh, we really didn't know uh, how thick it was because it was moving and how fast it was moving. Uh, and so then we launched two spacecraft. Uh, and so we sent two spacecraft out, and then we could find out a little bit about how it was moving back and forth. But then we found out it was moving up and down too. Uh, and so then uh, we decided, well, we need four spacecraft. Uh, and uh, so we launched four spacecraft, and we found out that, well, um, we really need them closer together, uh, and we need them over here and not over there. Uh, so uh, now we've got the mission that we think is just right, uh, the right separation, the right location, uh, and the right number of spacecraft. Well, in uh, high school, I had a guidance counselor who uh, tested me and found out what I was good at and told me to become an engineer. And somehow that didn't appeal to me. I thought engineers, they just do mechanical things, they build things and stuff like that. I wanted to do a little bit more than that and I thought, gee, you know, with the same set of talents I could go into science. And so I, I studied mathematics and I studied physics and uh, I then looked around for uh, what uh, area of science that uh, I was good at or what appealed to me. And that summer I applied to the government for a job and I didn't know exactly what job the government would put me in, but they, they gave me a job working on some early satellite data. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. And then the next year I went to graduate school. And 
Uh, I looked around when I got to graduate school and I found out there were some people at that institution that uh, were working in space. And so I went over and said, you got something for me to do? I'd certainly like to continue working uh, in space exploration. And they said, yeah. And then I just kept working in the field.